Team One. Breach, breach, breach. You're listening to Breach Your Mind. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. You know, a little while back when Chris and I were getting ready to do one of the episodes, he made a comment to me or asked a question rather. He said, how come everything has to always be so serious? You know, everything we talk about, it's always serious. And uh, my response to him was, well, I mean, it's, you know, kind of to help people when they're going through some things or trying to figure some stuff out. You know, it's pretty serious to some people. And that's kind of what we're, we're geared at. And in getting ready for this show, I got to thinking about it. And I don't know why, but I got to thinking about that comment or that question. And it, it dawned on me that, yeah, it was, you know, things kind of been, you know, the more darker side of things. And, you know, maybe lightening it up wouldn't be such a bad idea. You know, maybe add some levity to what we're doing here because often enough um you know helping out with with things and stuff like that is getting a laugh so i figured why not so you know to kind of add some levity instead of going the route that we've been going i figured i'd share a little bit of the insight a little bit of the the background of me what you know, help bring me to where I am. And uh, I guess, I guess one of the best times, especially considering, you know, what season it is and being summer and all, would kind of be from my childhood. So I got a buddy of mine, uh, for all intents and purposes, he's my brother. Um, We've known each other. I don't even want to try to count the years at this point. It's well over 20. But, uh, me and my buddy Trey, we met when I went to middle school here in the local county. First time I ever met him, we were six in the sixth grade. And, uh, you know, we didn't live too far from each other back then. You know, we walked and rode bikes to each other's house all the time. And, uh, and I met him then. And our friendship kind of grew over the years to the point where, you know, we were pretty much inseparable. Um, you know, everywhere he was, I was, and and vice versa. More so the first, where he was, I was. Um, You know, I was kind of a nerd back then. Um, You know, glasses for a a good portion of my life and and, uh, had a mullet at one point in those earlier years. Not real proud of that now, but I did. Um, But our friendship grew to the point where, you know, his family was my family and my family was his family. And we would share a lot of life together. And some of my fondest memories amongst the many over our our years um, were during the summers back in our teens. I'd say probably 16, 17 years old. That's been a while now. But during the summers, you know, it was when we'd always have our, our our most fun. We'd have a lot of fun during the rest of the time, but the summers is when, you know, moms and dads left us alone and, you know, kind of left to our own devices. And uh, with me having a driver's license, I'm a little bit older than he is, but with me having a driver's license, you know, it was nothing for us to jump in one of my vehicles and take off down the road to, to find something to do. And one of the places we used to go during the summer is we'd go down to his grandparents' house down in Darien, Georgia. And uh, I don't know if it was 100% Darien. I know Darien was close. But we would go down there and we'd spend a week or so down at his grandparents' house. And, you know, there may be plenty of people that are sitting here thinking, uh, why would you go to a, to a grandparents' house? There's you know, not really much you can do at a grandparents' house. And typically I wouldn't disagree with you, except for his grandparents lived on the river and the river, you know, was, had, you know, plenty of salt water in it. Um, that, that salt water, fresh water kind of mixed thing. Um, 
I say that I don't really know because I'm not that kind of guy, but I know we used to, to you know, go crab out there. We'd go shrimping. Um, but his parents or his grandparents lived down there on the river, like legitimately had a house on the riverbank with a dock that had um, a boat lift on it and all that good stuff. Um, his granddad was, you know, for the better the better sense of the word, a genius, he would sit there and just create all kinds of things. His shop was full of all kinds of things that he would just sit out there and, and piddle with and, and make different things. Um, so at the, the top of the dock up on the bank, there was a shower. That way when you got done swimming in the river, you just come back up and pull on the handle and give, us, give yourself a quick shower before you go in and get the salt water off of you. And uh, we spent a lot of time down there during the summers. We spent several summers down there. Um, you know, not only did we have a good time, but his grandparents were, were good people. Um, his grandma made these things. I, I think people call them Buckeyes. I, I just called them peanut butter balls. They were just literally balls of peanut butter dipped in chocolate. And, you know, during the summer, eating, eating a peanut butter ball with a glass of milk, that was, that was, that was some good eating. Um, but during our time down there, you know, we'd do a lot of stuff. Like I said, we'd go, we'd fishing or we'd go fishing. We'd, uh, we'd take the boat out. His granddaddy foolishly trusted us to take the boat out and we'd go out on one of the boats and, you know, just ride up and down the river or do whatever. Um, there was one time where we were riding down the river and I don't know what we were talking about at the time, but somehow we got on the topic of Baywatch. And uh, this is the David Hasselhoff TV show they watch, not the movie. And, uh, you know, it was pretty popular back then. And <clears throat> we were both fans of it. And we'd seen plenty of episodes where the, the lifeguard boats going, you know, across the ocean. And you see the, the lifeguard dive off the, the side of the boat with his, with his uh, buoy or whatever they're called and uh, go rescue the person. Well, we didn't have none of that. We weren't lifeguards. And... You know, we definitely weren't trying to, you know, save anybody. We're just being stupid and want to reenact those scenes. So we would take turns driving the boat. And while one of us is, and when I say driving the boat, I'm not talking the steering wheel. I'm talking the stick drive where you, you know, you've literally got the hand behind you controlling the motor. <clears throat> um, so one of us would drive the boat while the other one would bail off the side, you know, trying to dive. And uh, as was prone for us, it would progressively get faster and faster. You know, so it started out kind of putting down the river and taking turns diving off to kind of get used to it. And next thing you know, we're, you know, we're going down the river full throttle, trying to dive off. Of course, your hands hit and it throws your body all kind of different ways. And uh, there was this one time where we were down there and the neighbors, um, the neighbors were older um so they were you know we'd see them outside in the yard every once in a while but they would have a granddaughter that would come down during the summer and she was about our age too and of course you know me and trey we'd sit over on on his grandparents dock doing whatever we were doing and uh we would see her out there you know she'd have some shania twain playing or something like that out there on the dock and she's dancing of course both of us teenage boys are just sitting over there on the on his grandparents' dock, you know, watching her. And uh, of course, every time she'd look our way, we're oh, we're not looking, we're not looking. Um, but she would sit out there for you know a few hours, dancing, sitting, listening to music. Of course, we were out there anyway. Um, of course, that's when we decided to get brave and do the real dumb shit. Um, you know, the especially when the the water was lower. They had a floating dock for the lower portion, and then up top they had the the upper portion of the dock. You know, it was during those times. You know, we didn't really really care too much. She was out on the dock, so we had to go and, and try to show off. You know, it started off just kind of jumping off the the handrail. You know, trying to do flips or dive or whatever, which was stupid because according to him, and I never found it thankfully. Um, one of the floating docks had sunk and was down there somewhere underneath the main dock. Um, didn't didn't matter too much to us. We were jumping off there anyway. So, I mean, we're both fortunate we didn't become paralyzed. But 
you know, like I said, we'd start off by just kind of jumping off the handrail, you know, trying to do flips or whatever, until eventually it got to the point where, you know, we were we would start at the bank, run down the dock as fast as we could, and then just kind of launch ourselves over the handrail. And uh, we were, you know, constantly talking to each other, and and Trey was more the the ladies' man than he, than me. Um, you know, big shocker, you know, with the mullet and the glasses and all. But, you know, we would sit there and go back and forth with one another about who was going to wind up talking to her, who was going to go down there and make that first impression. And, uh, you know, for somebody that that was more the ladies' man, he was just as scared to go down there as I was. He may tell you different, but he was just as scared to go down there as I was. Um, don't know why, but we were. So we hatched a... Uh, we hatched an idea. You know, we, we had this idea that we would go out there, jump in the river, and then just casually swim over to her dock because they had an upper and a lower dock as well. We'd casually swim over to her dock and then strike up a conversation. Um, you know, it took us a little bit to get to the point where we were going to go do it. But, you know, we both finally had the idea. So, you know, we finally got the courage and, and we were going to do it. So we got up on the handrail and, uh, of course, we counted to three and both of us jumped off and started swimming. The thing we didn't think about in our little plan was the fact that the water in the river was tidal, which means it's going one direction at some point and then it's going another direction at another point. Um, as the tide comes in and goes out. And so here we are, we jump off the, the railing and into the river and we start swimming down there, not, you know, Michael Phelps swimming or anything, but we're kind of leisurely swimming our way down there and the tide was coming in. And about halfway between the docks, I guess it was the, the idea that struck us both at the same time of, all right, you know, this is this is kind of stupid you know we're we're being dorks about this we should just walk over and talk to her you know that's me putting my my adult thought upon it but either way we both chickened out and decided we weren't doing it and we almost turned around at the same time and tar started trying to swim back to trey's dock and uh you know i mentioned before we hadn't thought it out all the way and the tide was going in, so we were swimming against the current because we were now upstream. We were upflow from, or his dock was upstream, upflow from her dock. So here we are both trying to swim against the current to get back to his dock. Now, mind you, neither one of us were slouches for swimming. Um, both of us at this point were certified divers um we were working with the volunteer fire department in our local town and we're on the dive rescue team we'd gone through you know a bunch of diving classes and, and things like that so we were we were certified divers and uh you know we could swim pretty decent but not strong enough for the current we also didn't understand that in order to defeat current you needed to swim at an angle not straight up it so here we both are swimming, you know, trying to swim. And we realized that we weren't gaining any ground on his dock. We were losing. So we start swimming harder and harder and harder and harder. And, you know, to the point where we're both, you know, swimming as hard as we can. And the best we could do was maintain our position. Of course, all the splashing and, and everything like that obviously got this girl's attention. So when, you know, at one point I look back, she's standing on the upper dock looking over at us halfway between the docks, a little, little less toward, you know, her dock now. She's looking at us, both sitting out there trying to swim against current, looking like a bunch of dummies. And uh, which didn't help things, you know. So we're, we're swimming harder and harder, trying to get away. <clears throat> and it just wasn't happening. And one of us looked at the other, you know, at the same time or whatever, and you know, it was then we realized we were, you know, past the point of no return at that point. You know, there, there was no going back to the dock unless we drifted past her dock and went somewhere else. That was the only way we were going to avoid making contact with her. And uh, so we, we eventually kind of gave in and 
let ourselves drift down to, to her dot, which we didn't have a whole lot of choice in that because we were pretty much gassed at that point. And uh, so we wind up drifting down to her dock and the the lower docks, both on hers and on Trey's grandparents, had a ladder so you could climb out of the water easy. So we kind of got to her ladder and we kind of hung on to the ladder and we were looking up at the upper dock at her. She's looking down at us, you know, not knowing us, us not knowing her. And uh, we're like, hey, we're, you know, we're sorry. We, you know, we didn't think about the current. You, you mind if we come up and, you know, come up your dock and walk back next door? And she said it was fine. So we climbed up and we wound up going up on the dock and having conversation. And, uh, you know, we didn't walk straight back. We, we were having conversation about it. And uh, I think Trey wound up asking her if she wanted to come over later. You know, we were going to be swimming at nighttime, which, you know, thinking back on it now, eh, I'm not real, I, as an adult, I'm not real big on swimming in salt water when it's dark. Um, just because from everything I was told, that was kind of feeding times for the things with teeth. And uh, I don't really like being food. So he asked her if she wanted to, to come over and hang out with us. And she was, you know, happy to, um, I presume that, you know, like us, she didn't really have a whole lot of friends down there since she was visiting her grandparents and we were visiting his grandparents. You don't really, you know, get a whole lot of friends when you're just doing that visiting thing. So she said, yeah. And uh, of course we eventually walked back next door, both of us feeling pretty proud of ourselves. And uh, of course, Trey bragging about, you know, how he's the one that got her to, to come over and hang out with us. So, you know, fast forward a little bit, you know, dinner comes around and, you know, we eat dinner, both of us kind of excited about, you know, what's going to, what's going to happen about her coming over, you know, cause we'd been, you know, a couple summers now, we've been looking at this girl dancing on the dock next to us. And uh, now she's going to be, you know, hanging out with us. So we eat up and uh, get changed and, and as soon as the sun goes down and it's good and dark outside, we flip the lights on for the dock and, and head out to the dock. Of course, we're sitting out there and we're waiting and waiting and waiting. And, you know, she hadn't come. And of course, I was, you know, quite accustomed to, you know, not having that interaction. So it wasn't a big deal for me. Um, you know, and Trey was like, man, I don't think she's going to come. I'm like, yeah, probably not. Well, you know, it wasn't long wasn't too terribly long. I imagine it seemed longer than that because we were, you know, anticipating it so much. But uh, she come walking next door and, you know, walking down the dock. And we stood around, talked, listened to some music. And the idea come up about going swimming. And of course, you know, as a you know pretty girl, we're not going to, we're not going to chicken out. You know, you got to, you got to man up. You can't chicken out and look like some wimp. So, you know, we all decided, yeah, yeah, we're going to go swimming. You know, it doesn't matter that it's, you know, 9, 9.30 at night. Pfft, it, matter. it doesn't matter. So we get in our, our swim swimming shorts and she goes and gets in her bikini. And she comes back and, you know, we start swimming. We go down to the lower dock, jumping off the lower dock, you know, having a good time. And, uh, you know, then we brought up, you know, the fact that we, you know, normally we jump off the top we don't usually jump off the bottom dock you know that's that's all fine if you're a kid and everything but you know jump from the height that's where the real fun is so you know we we went back up and of course you know me and trey were taking turns jumping off the top and we're trying to encourage her to do it and eventually she did so she jumps in and uh we all swim around we're laughing and having a good time and she goes over to the the ladder gets out and, and is on the lower dock just kind of standing there and if i haven't said it enough i want to you know remind you that i said i was you know kind of a nerd a dork and uh i swam up to the ladder to get out and just as i got on the ladder and started to climb up i look at her and her top had come down on one side so I froze 16, 17 year old, years old, however old I was. I didn't know what to say, didn't know what to do. You know, there's this girl we had been looking at, you know, for a couple summers now, and I'm seeing something I didn't think I'd expect to. And uh, I was just frozen. I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't do nothing. She's just sitting there looking at me. 
and uh, Trey swims up and he grabs a homie. He's like, come on, man, get up there. And I'm like, Trey, you know, hey, look, you know, not quite that boisterous, but, you know, I made sure he understood there was a reason I wasn't going up the ladder. And of course, he looks up and he's just kind of staring at her and I'm staring at her and she's looking at both of us and she's kind of got this, you know, confused look on her face and neither one of us, and I'd never seen Trey freeze up like that before. Um, but neither one of us knew what to do. You know, the three of us are just sitting there, me and Trey are, you know, dangling off the ladder in the, in the river, like uh, fish food. And here she is up there in, in all her glory. And at some point, Trey pulled himself kind of up on the ladder and she goes, what? And <laughs> Trey just looks at her and goes, um, your boobs hanging out and then jumps back in the water. Of course, at this point, I'm mortified and I drop back into the water. I go underwater because I didn't know what else to do. And uh, yeah, come back up and she's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I've told the story a couple times now and, and people said, yeah, she knew. A lot of guys said that, of course, we all say that. Um, but I've had some females that was like, no, she, she knew that was happening. And she wasn't, she wasn't oblivious to it. I don't know whether she was or not. I just knew I was immensely embarrassed. Um, eventually me and Trey both swim back to the ladder and we're trying to get out. Now, both of us are trying to scramble to get out of the water and, as luck would have it, especially my luck, we're both on the ladder trying to get out of the water and the ladder broke. And Trey's granddad made this ladder. It was made out of PVC filled with concrete. And uh, as the ladder breaks, of course, both of us drop down and I managed to grab a hold of the rung, the, the last rung that didn't break. And, uh, you know, of course I latched my feet underneath um, the ladder that had broken off, not thinking about it, it just happened. And uh, Trey winds up climbing out and he's like, why aren't you getting out? And I'm like, cause I've still got the ladder. He says, what? I said, I've still got the ladder. I managed to get it up to my feet and pick the ladder up and hand the ladder off to him and climb out. And, and uh, the rest of the night was fine. Swimming was pretty much done at that point. Um, but that was fine by me. I had uh, I was already embarrassed, so. I was ready to stop swimming. Um, finished having a good time and she goes back next door and me and Trey go inside. And of course, next day, Trey's granddaddy, you know, he gets up, you know, before the, before the crow or before the rooster does. And uh, he goes out to the dock to do whatever, sees the ladder broken. He's, you know, comes in and what happened to the ladder? And of course, Trey being the quick wit that he was, Oh, granddaddy, we were, you know, we were taking the ladder down there because we take it out at nights. So we were taking the ladder down there and, and I dropped it and it broke. He looks at us and he goes, it broke, huh? Dropped it and it broke. He said, yes, sir. He goes, I had nothing to do with that girl that was over here last night, did it? Of course, you know, I'm now embarrassed because of his granddaddy, not knowing what his granddaddy saw. And uh, you know, Trey's like, uh, uh all right me and brian were swimming and we were getting out the water and it broke he goes yeah, that sounds more like it next time just tell me the truth and he goes on about his day so there you go i don't know how funny that was to you guys but that's a fond memory for me it's something i think about um and considering how i still kind of see myself as just a bigger version of that 16 17 year old self you know the the comedy in it the laughter and everything and the levity is there for me so i don't know how much we'll do of this but if it's something that's worth a dang if it's something that adds to the show then uh then i guess maybe i'll tell some more stories um along with trying to handle the the situations that get brought up um and if it doesn't go over well hey no skin off my back so until next time, guys, I appreciate you and uh, be safe. Bye.